Here we go with our next optimization problem. And this is another geometry problem, as I told you. We're going to get into several of these. Now, you already know your learning goal here is to try to optimize a function, which always means to try to maximize or minimize some kind of value. Just as with the previous problem, we're going to try to maximize something here. I want you to pause and take a moment to read the problem. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about how you would find the maximum volume associated with this box. All right, now the first thing I want to mention with this is that it does say in the problem that this is an open box that we're working with. And in particular, it's the top side of the box that's open. And what that means for us is that this box has five sides instead of six, the normal six faces that a rectangular prism would have. Okay, now the next thing we need to talk about are the dimensions of the box. Because it does mention that the box has a square base. So let's look at the base and let's say that we call one of the base edges x well since the base is a square we would call the other one x as well okay now there's a third dimension of course to any rectangular prism we've basically shown that the length and the width are both x and so the height we'll just call that h and what we're told to do of course is we're told to find the maximum volume of this box or more correctly, we're told to find the dimensions that would maximize the volume. But my point at this stage being we're trying to maximize volume. And so if we're going to try to maximize volume, one of the things that we need is some kind of function that calculates the volume of this box. And you guys know that for rectangular prisms, you multiply the length times the width times the height in order to find the volume. And so if we do that here, that's x times x times h or x squared times h. All right, so there's our function that we're going to use to maximize the volume. Except that, of course, the volume now is being calculated with two variables. And if we're going to really maximize it using the calculus that we know, we need the volume to be calculated with one variable, not two. And so we need some way of being able to just say the volume equals something in terms of x or something in terms of h. And we're going to choose x, of course. So we're going to have to go back and utilize other information that's in the problem. And the other information in the problem, besides it being an open box with a square base, is that this box is going to have a fixed surface area of 240 square meters. Alright, so let's pretend you're some kind of company or trying to make this box to fit your product in. And you know that you want to use 240 square centimeters of material to do this with. We're going to figure out what's the biggest possible box you can get out of that amount of material, essentially. Okay, well, how does the fact that the surface area is 240 square meters going to help us write an equation for volume that just has x's instead of x's and h's. All right, watch. I'm going to draw a couple figures here. In order for that surface area information to be useful to us, we have to think about how do you calculate the surface area of this particular figure. And there are two different shapes that make up the sides of this box. There's the one that's on the bottom, and that's a square, whose dimensions will be x by x. And then there are four, so I'm going to put times four, there are four sides that are all equal in size, and the dimensions of those four rectangular sides are x and h. All right. Now, if you think about the surface area then, it would have to be the sum of the areas of those five sides, and the area of the bottom side would be x squared, the area of each of the four sides would be x times h, and there are four of them. So if you have x squared plus 4xh, that would give you the surface area. Now since we know the surface area is 240, we're going to be able to use that equation to be able to determine what the height of the box is in terms of the length and width x. So it gets x by itself there by subtracting x squared from both sides and dividing by 4x. Good. Now let's see how we can use that. Okay, so we figured out that the height, what the height was in terms of x. Now we're going to go back to our volume function, the one that we're trying to maximize, and we're going to replace h with that value. 
So we're going to say the volume is now is equal to x squared times 240 minus x squared over 4x. And then we're going to simplify that a little bit. You hopefully notice this. That when we multiply x squared times 4x, we can do a little canceling. That can just become an x and a 4. And then, that'll end up giving us this. Alright, we'll have 240x minus x cubed over 4. or 60x minus 1 fourth x cubed is going to be the function that maximizes, well, it's a function that calculates the volume of this particular open box. All right, so now we've got our volume function. Let's go ahead and try to find out what value will maximize the volume. And of course, to do that, we need to find the critical values of this particular function. So set that equal to zero. You know what? That's a bad idea. We need to differentiate first, my fault. Because, of course, it's the first derivative we want to set equal to zero. It's not the function itself we want to set equal to zero. We don't want the volume to be zero. All right, so the derivative of the volume function is going to give us 60 minus 3 fourths x squared. All right, that's a 3 right there. And we want to set that equal to zero. And I'll let you do a little bit of the math on your own. But what you're going to find is that x is equal to the square root of 80, which I'm going to leave it that way for the moment, just so I can talk about some things. But we will end up approximating that to three significant figures momentarily. And the thing that I want to talk about briefly is what are the what's the domain of x in this particular function? Because we know that anytime we're optimizing, you plug in the endpoints as well as the critical value into your function to find out which yields your maximum and minimum value. Now, hopefully it's pretty clear that x can't be zero here. It could be something really close to zero, but not zero. But as far as what the maximum value is, this is one where you're not gonna be able to figure it out just through simple reasoning. There, and it's not worth the time, and I want to explain why it's not worth the time to figure out what the actual maximum value is, but I am going to give you an idea of what the maximum value of x is. Take a look at this picture. And what I'd like to show you is how the volume changes while the surface area stays the same as I change the value of x, the length of the square basis here. All right, now you're going to notice this slider that I'm going to use to change what the value, I know it's a right here and it's x in our drawing, I had to call it a, but that's going to correspond with the length of each side of the square base. And then you're also going to notice that this value, the height, is going to change and that'll affect the volume. And what we're looking at is what can the height actually be equal, sorry, not the height, but the sides of the square base, what can they go up to as a maximum value? Now watch. I'm going to change that value of A on that slider and you're going to see the box change along with it and eventually what's going to happen is that the height is going to approach zero and we can't let the height be zero just because we can't let X be zero and so it looks like pretty much as I'm getting towards 15 centimeters that the height of that box is going to reach zero I could go a little bit further alright actually it was at 15 and a half centimeters now there's no reason you should have to figure out that number, but it does turn out that the maximum value of x is 15 and a half. All right, now one more picture to illustrate that, and this one you could figure out on your own. You wouldn't need a special picture like I just made. And what I'm showing you here is the graph of our volume function. You can see the equation right there corresponds with how we are calculating the volume. 
All right, now you can easily use your graphing calculator when you're permitted to, and you would be for this type of problem. Use your graphing calculator and graph the volume function, and you can see in so doing, first of all, that there was a maximum value that x could approach. All right, if you're looking, this is from 0 to 20 along the x-axis, and right about there is where the volume becomes zero because the volume with the y-coordinates. And so we wouldn't want our value of x to exceed that. And that's about 15, I'm assuming here. You get down from 20 to 18, 16, 14, 12, maybe 11. Anyway, there is a maximum value that x can reach. But I hope it's pretty clear that in this case, our maximum volume is not going to occur at either of the endpoints. It's definitely not going to occur here. It's not going to occur there it's going to occur right there at our critical value. So really, our critical value is the only thing we need to plug in to find the maximum volume, and in particular, the dimensions of the box that would yield the maximum volume. All right, well, let's go back and do that real quick then. And what you see on your screen here is the important information we need to actually answer that question, what the dimensions of the box are that would yield the maximum volume. All right. Well. We figured out that we're going to have a maximum when x is the square root of 80. If we're going to say what the dimensions of this box are, though, we need to say what the height is as well. And remember, the height can be found by doing 240 minus x squared divided by 4x. So I want you to use your calculator and go and plug in the square root of 80 into that expression and see what you get. And then let's go ahead and write the dimensions rounded to three significant figures. All right, and those dimensions are these. The three significant figures, the square root of 80 is about 8.94. So we're going to have an 8.94 centimeter by 8.94 centimeter by, and then when you plugged in the square root of 8 into that height expression, you got 4.47. So by 4.47 centimeters. All right, and just for the heck of it, go ahead and plug in the value of x into our volume function and see what the maximum volume is. And to three significant figures, and remember IB always allows you to round to that, uh, to three significant figures, you're going to find out that the maximum volume is about 1,430 cubic centimeters. And since I started illustrating that, let me continue here. If you look, we're close to having our volume at a maximum right there. I've got right now the square base of 8.5 centimeters. And you're going to see as I increase that, that this volume is going to increase for a little bit, but then it's going to start decreasing, indicating that I've reached a maximum volume. All right, there's 8.75 centimeters, there's 9 centimeters, and you see the volume went up to about 1431. And then when I go past 9 centimeters, it steadily decreases. Now, this shows me that the maximum volume was 1431. The three significant figures, so still 1430, right? Okay, so that's how you find the maximum volume of an open box with a fixed surface area. Good work.